Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started, everybody. Um, good afternoon. Welcome to Besides Las Vegas Proving Ground. Um, this talk is, so you think you can CH mod reasoning about file permissions, and our speaker is Jared Chandler. Um, a couple of uh, announcements before we get started. We want to thank our sponsors, especially our inner circle sponsors, Critical Stack and Valamail, and our stellar sponsors, um, Secure Code Warrior, Paranoid, and Amazon. It's their support along with our other sponsors and donors and volunteers that make B-Sites possible, so thank you. Um, these talks are being streamed live. Um, as a courtesy to our speakers, uh, to our speaker and, and our audience, please make sure your cell phones are set to the silent position. Uh, at the end, if you have a question, um, just raise your hand. We'll call on you one at a time. We'll get uh, Jared to repeat the question back so the YouTube audience can hear it. Um, and with that said, let's get everything started here. Uh, please welcome Jared Chandler. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, I know file permissions may not be the most glamorous thing, but sometimes it seems pretty important. Uh, so I'm Jared Chandler. Uh, today I'm going to present something called X-Ray. It's an open source tool I've developed to help uh, lay users reason about Unix style file permissions. Let you ask human friendly questions about the security of your file system and get concrete answers back in return. Uh, so in terms of what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk about the motivation, why did I develop this tool? I'm going to talk about the approach I took to like actually solve this problem. I'm going to give you a demonstration and show you what X-Ray can do. Um, I've put it up on GitHub. It's research software, so please be kind to me, but uh, you're welcome to pull it down and fool around with it, and I'll show that URL again at the end. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, I started out as a full stack developer a long time ago. I've got probably a decade plus uh, experience out in industry. I've done a lot of different things, and I've worked in a lot of different roles. Uh, I've done database stuff, networking stuff, you know, sorry, uh, you name it. Um, but these days, uh, I'm at Tufts University working with Dr. Kathleen Fisher. Um, my research areas of interest are things at the intersection of human reasoning and formal methods. Some of the other uh, research projects I work on are automatic protocol reverse engineering from network samples. Uh, I'm working on clandestine botnet infiltration, so, you know, like Ocean's Eleven, you've got a botnet and I'm going to steal it and no one's going to realize it's been stolen until it's already too late. I work on cognitive attacks on end users, so that's figuring out ways to deceive the user uh, sort of at a, at a biological or a perceptual level, so it's really hard to defend against that. And I work on file permissions, and that's what I'm gonna talk about here today. So every good security story starts with a crime. I was a teaching assistant uh, for a computer science class, and one of my duties was to find out when the students were doing bad things. Um, we teach them to use GitHub, and to you know, use version control, and you teach them that, and suddenly they're using it to share answers, collaborate inappropriately, cheat, et cetera. So I learned to go out on GitHub and look for people up to no good. And one day when I was out there, I found some scanned copies of our exams. And this was stuff that only the staff and the instructor should have access to. It should never have been in the hands of a student. And I kind of jumped to the conclusion, oh, clearly we got hacked. You know. Some, some student created some malware and uploaded it as a homework assignment, and then we ran their submission unsandboxed, and it, it took copies of these files out, and that's how they got the data out. And you know, the languages we, we use to teach are like kind of stupid, simple languages, except for like standard ML, which is you know, a compiler language. It's kind of wacky. So if somebody like wrote malware in standard ML, like, you know, I, I tip my hat to that person. But there are a couple things that didn't make any sense. Like, if you're that badass, why are you posting this stuff on GitHub? Uh, why also didn't you post other solutions? Why didn't you post grades? Why didn't you post you know, our infrastructure that you clearly would have had access to? And then it kind of dawns on us. Somebody on our side had made the exams world readable. We went back and looked, somebody was in a rush, they were trying to do something about grading, they couldn't get the file permissions right, and they were just like, chmod 777. Like, everyone gets all the permissions, and you know what, that worked, because probably the job got done. And no one looked back, uh, nobody, nobody realized anything was wrong, and later a student goes to like make a copy of the course material, 
as, they, as they're allowed to, and they probably didn't realize there was anything in the copy they took that they weren't, they weren't supposed to have. So we felt pretty dumb. Like, how many PhDs does it take to get file permissions right? Uh, clearly more than we had, and we had a few working on it. Uh, we realized if this had happened here, it could happen again, and it may have happened at other places that we were responsible for and we weren't aware of it. And when we dug a little deeper, we realized we didn't even understand, like, with a lot of clarity, how file permissions work. That, like, we had some misconceptions about, like, what should be secure and what shouldn't. So, probably not everyone here is totally familiar with Unix and Linux style file permissions. Um, we certainly weren't. Uh, I'd like to do a little bit of a level set and just talk about some of the things that I thought were relevant uh, about Unix file permissions. Um, I'm going to talk about what they are, uh, how are they evaluated, and how you set them. And this is just kind of to give you a sense of uh, what we're up against when you're trying to get them right. So there's three parts to Unix file permissions. There's the user, the group, and everyone else. Um, the permissions themselves are read, write, and execute. And execute is either run it as a program or enumerate the files in it. And when they get evaluated, there's this algorithm that like is applied. Um, and you never see this, and unless you like go back to some seriously old 1970s gray beard, like written on a typewriter like paper, you probably would have a hard time finding it. Um, and it breaks down into three cases, where if you're the user, you get the user permissions. If you're not the user in the group and you're in the group, you get the group permissions. And if you're not the user and you're not in the group, then you get the other permissions. How about how you set those permissions? Chmod 755. Chmod equals RW plus X. Chmod e U equals RWX comma GO equals U minus W. Did that make things more secure or less? I mean, I can't really tell. Sometimes you need to know what the permissions were before you issued the command. Sometimes you need to know the context in which it is, like what are the permissions of the directory above it that's containing this. So with all that stuff going on, it's no wonder it's really hard to reason about if your file permissions are correct. And then after that, we were like, okay, well, we, we have a better idea of how file permissions are, how they're supposed to work. Let's try checking some of them manually, because we have to secure this directory. We have to make sure this mistake doesn't happen again. But we were quickly over our head. Like, the directory we're working on, it's a multi-user system. We had, like, 200,000, like, directories and files. So doing it brute force, you know, in our heads clearly wasn't going to work. But we had a couple of insights. Our first insight was that how people think about file permissions is different than how they're implemented. There's sort of the idea you have of security, which is, you know, this type of user should have access to this type of file. And then there's all the group and schmods that you type in to actually try and implement that, that policy. And it's great if those things exactly overlap, but that's not always the case. Sometimes there's things that are, you know, in your in your head as thoughts that don't get implemented as permissions. And then there's other things that are permissions that you never really thought about in terms of, in terms of thoughts. And both of those things are kind of, kind of dangerous. Our second key insight was that when a human is reasoning about whether or not the actual permissions implement their idea of security, they're running that algorithm again and again in their head. They're, they're running it recursively for every single file, every location in the file system. And that's really, really hard for a human to do. I mean, you can do it for maybe two directories deep and about four files, but beyond that, it just kind of exhausts your, it exhausts your mental resources. So we study formal methods at my school, um, and when you study formal methods, uh, everything looks like a nail, and when you have a problem, you break out your formal methods hammer and take a whack at it. Um, the approach we used is something called symbolic execution. So symbolic execution is, is one technique that allows you to reason about what a computer program will do or how it will behave without actually running it. Um, our key insight here was that we treat the entire file system and the permissions together as a program. Symbolic execution lets us reason about which parts of that program will execute for a certain set of conditions. Sort of like, you know, what are the conditions for a branch or for an if statement that will cause this program to go into this particular, into this location and satisfy this condition. So what we do is we take the permissions and the algorithm that's used to calculate whether or not the permissions are satisfied, and we convert that over to constraints. So those three cases I showed you earlier, 
We convert them into cases of plus user, which means you are the user, minus user, which means you are not the user, plus group, which means you're in the group, and minus group, which means you are not a member of the group. Then, does anyone recognize this guy? Are there, are there any fans for the, from the, of the TV show The Office here? Okay. We take this guy, he's got some properties, Jim the user, and we have a set of constraints that allow permission at a particular location. We look to see do the properties of Jim the user satisfy one of the sets of constraints on, on this particular file. If one of those sets of constraints is satisfied, then Jim has permission to do uh, this particular action. So that's great. Uh, file permissions, or excuse me, uh, that's great. Boolean formulas like let us calculate things very precisely using constraints. You know, you can have lots of ands and ors and nots, and if you're like a math person, you're super into that because it's exact, but it's not exactly user friendly. So we built X ray. We wanted something that was fast, easy, and safe for everyday users to use. You give it as input human friendly security questions like, uh, what can everyone access? It uses symbolic execution to churn away to calculate those constraints, and it gives you concrete answers like file one, two, and three, and here's why. X-Ray has a simple pipeline. Uh, you basically give it the output of uh, running the find command. You pipe that into a text file, and you give it another text file that talks about users and groups on your system. It's a Python script. You can bring the tool to your data. You don't have to bring the data to your tool because, hey, I, I do security too. I, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust something that asked me to have like root access, um, you know, up in, up on the cloud. Here's an example of some of what we asked for data. If you've ever run the command ls on a Unix system, you're pretty familiar. So we're not asking for too much. X-ray is a little different than how we regularly think of, of permissions on a Unix system. Uh, we use something called semantic permissions. Um, maybe a good way to describe these is like. If you know exactly the path to get to a file, you can just jump to it, okay? That's what we call traverse. But how about you're a user who doesn't know what they're looking for and you need to enumerate the files in each directory at each level to find the thing you wanna actually, actually get to. We call that discover. Edit and execute work, work similarly. We think these map better onto sort of how humans think about security than simply talking about like the actual concrete permissions on the file system. Putting it together, you can ask simple questions of X-Ray, like Dwight can discover in the DMPC uh, file system. There's three parts, a who, a what, and a where. So it's a, uh, like a user or a group, uh, a permission, and then a location, which is a path with some regular expressions in it. We wanted how you write the query expressions to be as similar as possible to how people actually talk, talk about them in everyday language. And we also wanted X-Ray to use what you know. So like you're familiar with this, X-Ray basically just adds a little bit of extra data. You write a query in X-Ray and it adds two columns. It adds a column here which indicates all the files that satisfy this query and it has this column here which indicates all the files that uh, violate, violate the, uh, the query. Uh, if you're looking at the counts, the counts, uh, the counts sum up the number of uh, child elements in the tree that actually adhere to or violate the property. Let's say you're only interested in like things that actually violate or things that actually like uh, uh, actually adhere to. We have some modifiers of example and counter example that basically say, show me only the things where it works or show me only the things where it doesn't work. And if you're looking for the why, uh, like here's a query, Toby can read in dmpchr.jpg. Uh, um, X-ray supports what we call X-ray mode. You turn on X-ray mode and remember those constraints we talked about earlier. You can see all the constraints that a user or an agent satisfies. So right here we can see this agent, Toby, satisfies this set of constraints right here. He satisfies this set of constraints right here and he doesn't satisfy any at the, at the leaf level. This allows you to reason about why the permissions are working or why they aren't for, for uh, anywhere in your file system. Okay, so I've hit you with some screenshots. I'd like to also convince you that it's Easy to use, so I'm gonna, you know, try it out live, okay. So here we have uh, the X-ray uh, permission query environment. So remember the office? Like, let's imagine we work at Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. And Michael Scott's the CEO or the boss. Um, 
he's got a big heart, he's a nice guy, but maybe he's not the guy we want in charge of editing files. So why don't we ask X-Ray, where can Michael edit files? So we type Michael can edit in DMPC. Okay, X-Ray tells us. It gives us counts where Michael can edit a file and where Michael can't. This is kind of showing us an overview first, and then if we want to drill in on smaller stuff, uh, we can do that. Let's do that. So we're going to write example. We only want to see things where Michael actually can edit it. Whoops. Okay, now we only see the files that Michael can edit. Do you see anything in there that's interesting? Uh, let's see. Well, we've got this file right here, lame-toby.jpg in the HR directory, and next to it is the salaries data. I guess that's reasonable that he should be able to edit the salaries. I don't know if I want Michael to be able to edit some sort of marketing jingle. That seems like that could be a little dangerous. And it looks like Jim's got some sort of list of clients. I'm not sure Michael should be able to edit that. Okay, how about Dwight? Dwight's an interesting guy. He's got lots of, uh, lots of you know, curiosity, let's find out what Dwight can discover. Example, Dwight can discover in DMPC. All the things Dwight can discover. Hmm. Oh, it looks like Dwight can actually discover the salaries right there. That doesn't seem right. That's probably some sort of file permissioning error that we need to fix. And it looks like Michael's probably got the file permissions wrong when he like edited the file. So originally I talked about uh, exams, right? Uh, some files that were out there in the real world that you know shouldn't have been. Let's write a query like that. Example, everyone can discover in DMPC. Let's do the HR directory. Let's just see what's inside the HR directory. Ooh, looks like the salaries are discoverable by everyone. That's probably not the way it should be. And if we wanted to find out more about why that's the way, or why that's the case, we can turn on x-ray mode, like this, rerun that query, and we can see exactly which set of constraints is satisfied by the user. Okay, so we imagine x-ray would be used differently by different teams. We imagine a red team might use it to figure out what's accessible and exploit it, and the blue team would probably try to defend the same stuff. Maybe you're in DevOps, you want to figure out what's changed. Maybe you want to figure out if the things that are accessible still are. If you're a developer, before you use a container or a VM, maybe you want that. Maybe you want to check out what can see what. Or you're like me, you know, you just want some help with your file permissions. We took this tool and we ran it on three different academic file systems, ranging from 50,000 to a quarter million files and directories. We found file permission errors in all three. They ranged from like, hey, this guy who owns this directory can't see some of these files in here, to some issues where I'm picking up the phone and calling people on the weekend because my research project found something that was that important that they should actually secure right away. Okay, so to recap, I've talked about the motivation, why I thought this in was interesting, and what motivated us to develop this tool. I've talked a little bit about the approach by which we use symbolic execution to actually perform this, and hopefully I've given you a good demonstration of what of what X-Ray can do and hopefully encourage you that it's not too hard to actually use. That's something that like with a little training, you could probably you know, get some real use out of it. Um, we're very interested in doing more research into the area of file permissions and figuring out what kind of file permissions are common and why. So we wanted to get this tool out into your hands. Uh, we're hopeful if you use this tool, you'll give us some good feedback and you'll tell us more about the uh, types of file permission errors uh, you discover as a way of you know, sort of paying it, paying it back to us. And we're hopeful that this and other techniques like it will hopefully reduce uh, file permissions in the future. Um, I'd like to say thank you as an audience, thank you to my mentor Emily, and I'm happy to take your questions. I, the question was, um, have, I, have I thought about uh, extending this to uh, cloud systems like S3 buckets? Uh, yes, um, I think anywhere where there is uh, sort of a concrete, uh, an, 
execution model of the permissions, we can use uh, some of these, these symbolic execution and formal method techniques to actually assist the human to actually reason about it. And we think that's a, that's a promising uh, venue for further for research. Uh, the question was, uh, it works with basic permissions, does it work with fancier permissions? Um, right now it doesn't, but uh, we're hopeful to do that and a whole lot of other stuff in the future. Uh, the question was, uh, from an infrastructure side, uh, when you have lots of different layered roles, how do you, how do you use something like this to uh, determine the effect of permissions? Uh, again, we think uh, sort of this constraint-based approach where we're able to sort of create a, a formal model of what the effect of permissions are and use some of our actual research magic to calculate those things in an efficient and tractable manner, I think those would probably allow us to do it. And I'd, I'd be interested in any particular uh, use cases you guys think uh, you know, are pressing. I, I would, yeah. one more question? Um, the question was, does this tool take into account SE Linux? So like, there are methods of securing uh, Linux file systems using like ACLs. It didn't, we didn't do that. We just basically picked the thing that from our, and this is kind of a, an interesting side. You know, we looked at file permissions. We said, these things really haven't changed for 20 years. Like, you know, the way people used to secure these on a, a Linux or a Unix system are pretty much the way we still do. We should kind of advance the state of the art. and. If it was going to be supplanted by something better, we would have expected it, but that doesn't, that doesn't uh, mean that we can't defend the stuff that's exposed today. And that's why we felt it was important to build this tool. Uh, the question was, uh, does this tool uh, actually assist with setting them? Uh, right now, it just assists with, with analyze, analyzing them because the question of how do you want the file permissions set is a really interesting one from a human perspective because uh, I probably shouldn't move files around on your file system to make the permissions correct because that might confuse the user. And in this problem, it's all back to the user. Like it's the, the, the judgment of like a human which says, hey, this is what it should be and this is what it shouldn't be is kind of the gold standard. So we want to make sure we have actual human knowledge in the loop. But my advisor did add, ask me to, to work on exactly that. Can we uh, synthesize and repair file permissions if they get out of whack? We had a cron job nightly that would go through the whole file system and find. And then if we found a user with um, some doc file that had 777, we would actually change it and then automatically send them the email. Do you have the other question? No, I'm just going to comment. Well, we can take one more. We're going to have to stop. I see great potential for the good that this could do. Has there been any thought process into how to protect against the evil that can also be done? For example, an alerting type system where a user is making changes to things that they should not. Uh, the question was, uh, there's lots of good here. Uh, how do we defend against evil? Um, Yes, uh, you, can, you can actually write quite complicated uh, scripts inside this about the file permissions uh, and it'll run them and you, uh, you can use them to basically diff your file permissions and figure out when something has gotten out of whack. I think there's also a lot of potential for where uh, something like this could, could be developed and sort of uh, act as like a, like a firewall between, oh, you're about to change a file permission, it violates this sort of abstract human thought-based security concept, we're not going to allow you to do it because, you know, it's probably, it's probably the bad thing to do. Okay. All right, Terry, thank you very much. Thank you.